When I first started making the change to get into the field of software, anytime somebody would give me an interview, I would study day and night. I would watch endless YouTube videos. I would do so many code challenges I couldn't even think the next day. And I would be reading blogs on common concepts that I thought they would ask me during the interview process. But none of these really prepared me for the interview. If anything, the only thing they did was make me more anxious and feel like I didn't know anything at all. So that's why I stopped preparing for technical interviews and I started doing something else instead. So I'm going to explain my process and hopefully it'll help you. Now this may sound odd because the overall goal is to get a job, but before you make this change or while you're making the change, that really shouldn't be your focus. In my opinion, your focus should be to get as many interviews as possible. So when I would get invitations for interviews, I would prepare nonstop because I didn't know what to expect. So I would study everything. But as I started to go on more interviews, I realized that every company is different. Some interviews were more technical and some interviews were very personal and I didn't really have a lot of technical questions or a lot of technical challenges. So it really depended on the company. So what I began to do was look for patterns during these interview processes. What were the things that I was constantly being asked no matter the company? And the only way to notice is to get as many interviews as I could. So over time, I started to see that the main topics that would come up were anything regarding, you know, object oriented programming, anything specific to my language of JavaScript specifically, how I work with the team, how do I go about solving problems, and how I would think through implementing something new. And this is why I advocate just focus on getting interviews. Try not to get too focused on the job because over time you'll start to see what you need to learn and you won't waste so much time trying to prepare for each interview. The next thing is to look on Glassdoor for clues. You can go to Glassdoor and you can look up different companies and there's an interview section to where you can see reviews from people's interview processes. I would say be careful on this one at times because some of these reviews can be inaccurate or they may be leaving out some key details because they have to. But the bigger the company, the better chance you have of being able to read some reviews of some interviews and try to get a common theme of what to expect for the position that you're applying for. So in this example, let's look up GitHub. So I go to Glassdoor, look up the company and go to the interview section. And here I would just search for the job title, which in this case is software developer, and just look at some results I find for the interview process reviews. Now what you may notice is some people leave a great amount of detail for their interview process, but then you may see some reviews to where it's not a lot of detail at all. But the goal is to just try to see a pattern. You wanna see a pattern or a common theme that anybody that has had a software developer interview, where they be QA support or whatever, you're interviewing for you want to see what these people are saying about the interview process now the reason why you might not see a lot of specifics is because some companies require candidates to sign a form which is basically a privacy form they don't allow you to speak about the interview um, from either side they won't share information that you give and you can't share information that they give during the interview process whether it's about the company or the interview itself so if you don't see a lot of details then that's the reason why. So the next thing, if you do have a coding challenge, you need to understand what the coding challenge is for and the key to get through this challenge. Now I'll be honest with you, doing a coding challenge is probably one of the most stressful things that you will experience going through your interview process. And the reason why is because when you have somebody looking at you or critiquing what you're doing, you tend to get very anxious and very stressed. And by doing that, you start to doubt yourself and you forget things that you would have been able to do at any other time if somebody wasn't over your shoulder. But the key to the coding challenge is to talk. They wanna see how you think and they wanna see how you operate within a team. Obviously getting the challenge correct is a huge plus and a huge benefit, but the main thing they wanna see is how does this person think? Do they think logically? Do they communicate well? Will they talk to the rest of the team to explain the things that they're doing? So you have to give your first impression during the interview process that you will be able to do this. The things that you are thinking to yourself, you wanna say it out loud. This gives great information to the interviewer as to why you're doing a certain thing or what you plan on doing. And I noticed that the more that I would talk during the interview, they start to feel more comfortable with you. And the more comfortable they feel with you, they start to give little hints or ask you certain questions to kind of push you along in the challenges they see you're getting stuck. Believe it or not, most interviewers don't like to see people fail. So they may try to help you and push you along, but they're not gonna do that if you don't talk because they don't know what you're thinking. So even though the goal is to get the code challenge correct, the next goal is really to turn the interview into a collaboration. So that way they can picture you as far as being part of the team. The next thing is to read the job description and study specifically what's on each job description. Now I've said before that I feel like a lot of job descriptions, maybe like 70% of the job description is kind of fluff, but there is a section to where you definitely want to pay attention to 
and that's your job responsibilities. Whatever you're gonna be asked to do during your job, they will ask you about this during your interview. If you don't have any experience for these things that are in the job description, then you need to try to learn about it as best as you can before you go into these interviews. I've had some interviews to where I would look at the job description and I would see that I had most of the requirements, but not all of it. And I would apply anyway, assuming, you know, well, they're probably gonna just say that I have enough experience, but they probably won't even worry about the things that I don't have experience in. And I was greatly mistaken many times. Now, this interview lasted probably 10 minutes because the only questions they asked me was regarding the things that I didn't have experience in. And that interview got really awkward really quick. Try not to apply to positions to where you don't have a clue as to what's going on in the job description because they will bring it up during the interview process. But the good thing is, is that if you're focused on a specific language and, or the frameworks related to that language, you'll start to kind of see a lot of similarities between what certain companies are asking for, for your job responsibilities. So it's not like every job that you apply to, you have to learn something completely different. If you're focused on the language that you've chosen, then that's half the battle. And you'll see that you don't have to keep preparing for the same things over and over again. Now this next thing is a big one. And this was actually taught to me by a senior software engineer and he told me when I first started trying to get into the field to always ask this question and I honestly think this question helped me to get further ahead in a lot of processes just because I asked it now let me explain the question anytime you get to the end of an interview they're always gonna ask you know do you have any questions for me or any concerns and you know you can always ask the typical questions like well you know how do you feel about the company and what do you think about the culture? Things like that. But the questions that everybody always asks. But when I would get to the end of those questions, I would always ask them, is there anything in my background or my experiences that disqualifies me from this position? Now, this is just a professional way of asking, tell me what it is that I need to do to get this job. And believe it or not, interviewers will be pretty honest with you and tell you what it is that may disqualify you from the position. If there's something in your experience that you may be lacking, they will tell you about it. If I asked them and they gave me some feedback it was definitely a hundred percent honest and it was something that I didn't know that I was lacking when you go in these interviews it's very hard to tell what the interviewer is thinking it's very hard to read them you don't know if they're happy with you or not happy with you because everybody's trying to put on their best impression so they're smiling and, and laughing and they may not like you as a candidate at all but asking them this question will remove all of that and help you to get right to the core of what you need to do. So each time I would ask this question, I would leave each interview knowing what I needed to get stronger at and what I needed to improve on. It's pretty much a shortcut into not getting into the guessing game of after every interview, wondering if you did well or if you didn't do well. If you ask this, when you leave each interview, you will know if you did well or not. So these are all the reasons as to why I don't prepare for technical interviews anymore. When I first started, I would be so anxious and stressed trying to see what to study and what to learn. Until I realized that if I just get interviews, then those interviews will tell me what I need to study and what I need to learn. So I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, please like the video and talk to you next time.